when you sign up to something like this, what's the main emotion? Because you do hear about how they it dominates your life so much when you take on a big program like this. Yeah, well, this is, you know, I, I didn't expect to still be playing Peggy five years later. So when I did the first Captain America film, it was daunting because of the scale of it, but I saw it for a job in and of itself. And I remember when I was doing the premiere, I was actually going back to London the next day to do a play and just thought that would be the end of Peggy Carter for me. Um, so it's luckily, it, it, I wasn't bombarded with all of this too soon. There wasn't the, this big grand scheme of, you know, this kind of mastermind plan of what Peggy would be in five years. And I think it's been a lot more kind of um, digestible because of that. But when you're working with a Marvel franchise, the one thing that you do feel is a tremendous amount of support because I think that they do have a winning formula. They know what they're doing with this in this genre and they do it so well. Yeah, they do seem to put uh, the kind of the, the story quite and characters quite high up on the agenda which yeah. for a big kind of franchise thing you don't always expect yes absolutely sometimes there, there is um it's kind of form over content but i think that they like to fill it in with details and especially kind of the origin stories of how they became who they are um and that makes it so much more interesting and, it, and, and for an actor as well it just means that it's it you're doing doing fight sequences, you're doing the, the action, and it's fun. But then also you can bring a little bit more heart to it and make it slightly more three dimensional. Do you still do all that stuff yourself as well, all the fighting? Oh the yeah, movie? so I I do all my own stunts. I have two stunt coordinators who teach me it like a dance, and uh, we break it down, and then I shadow my stunt double until I get it right, and then I'll film I'll film it I'll film the whole sequence until I get it right, and then she'll she'll go had have a pass at it as well. But they want to use as much of of me as possible, um, just to make it more authentic and for me to feel like I'm really kind of having a go. Any bumps and bruises along the way? Yes, six men were harmed in the making of the season one um, in the downstairs region. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> I wasn't uh, expecting that. They must love you. Yeah, <laughs> it's. I kind of describe my stunt experience as having a lot of confidence with very little skill, which is a really deadly mix. Yeah, that's acting. Um, that's act yes, exactly. And uh, and then um, I kind of hit someone over the back with a lead pipe. I kicked a chair into the assistant director. Um, I have I have a few of these things that are on Twitter that I, I posted as videos just because they are very they're very funny, um, but also the stuntmen are kind of like you know they they're so used to it they're they're used to getting a lot worse so I didn't feel too bad I think they can take it. I like the idea of all these men just in hospital beds with their arms out and sort of <laughs> sticks connected. <laughs> yeah, can't exactly. Move. Um, TV's dominance over the last few years is like it only continues to grow. Do you think it's only? It feels like it's still expanding. Yeah. And is still I don't know about taking over movies, but it, they're certainly becoming more on a, on a par. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is a real golden age for television, and I think also it's creating and attracting a lot of the writers and directors who um, are coming over from movies. So there isn't a stigma attached to being part of the TV world versus the film world anymore. Um, it's it's also that there's a lot more time in television for actors to really explore a character and give a longer arc to a journey um, and I think that's kind of very appealing um, there's yeah and there's also some great roles for women in television um, and I yeah I think that's going to continue I think we're on a on a roll at the moment but it's it doesn't seem to be slowing down anytime soon and I doubt you have time but are there any TV shows that you've that you love that you sort of, uh, yeah. sort of obsess over or ones that you want to check out the uh... two well I'm, I'm kind of quite behind because I don't have a television so I have to wait until I can kind of download it um, uh, in, you know on the internet so I um, but I love Nurse Jackie because I love Edie Falco very much she's, she's a brilliant. brilliant actress and, why don't you have a TV because um, I, I don't know I don't really watch telly I um I just never got one. That's <laughs> and good. I travel so much. It's kind of, yeah, it kind of it's healthy. It makes makes me busy. feel like yeah, keeps keeps busy. But Orange Is the New Black as well is a is a show that I I love. And then when when in doubt, I always put on Arrested Development because that just cracks me up. It's my favorite comedy show. So before I go, how long will you play Peggy? Do you think? To, if could you see yourself <sighs> in ten years still? Yeah, I would love that. I mean, I mean, I know that it's early days and I'm only on season two, but I I do love the experience of playing her. So I would be overjoyed to be able to keep playing her. I think it will completely depend upon the success of each season and whether or not the the fans still feel that there's more in her and more stories to tell. Um, but you know what's great about it is because we know from Winter Soldier that she lived such a long life this series kind of fills in the gaps about what she did in that time so you know we can explore her and her 
30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s if, if she's still working. Uh, I wouldn't put it past her that she's still working even on her deathbed. Um, yeah, so I think there's a lot more in her. Well, hope so. Stop yeah. hurting stuntmen. Yeah, I will. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs>